Welcome to Chaos Cortex. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, today, I thought we would take a look at Tinkercad. Um, this is what I use to make all of my 3D models that I 3D print. So it is a website. Um, I'll put a link in the description, um, or it is um, tinkercad.com, T-I-N-K-E-R-C-A-D.com. It is just an online CAD program, and CAD stands for Computer Aided Design. And the nice thing about Tinkercad is it's all online, so you don't have to download anything, no programs or anything like that, and all the files are stored on their servers, so you can access them wherever you need to, which is really nice. Um, Tinkercad does have some limitations. Um, it's not the most robust CAD program out there, but um, it is very useful and I've been able to do some pretty cool things with it. So let's take a look at how to do this. So I thought I'd just do a quick overview slash tutorial on how I use this. So if you go to the website, you'll have to create an account. Um, it is free. So you create the account, you land on a page similar to this, and you can create, um, you can click create new design, and um, I've already done that, it's called test right here, so I'll just click tinker this, and it'll pop you up on a page similar to this. And this is basically your work plane, as it says right there. This is just a 3D space that you can use to build stuff. Um, and for all intents and purposes, consider this plane your ground, because um, or your print bed, whatever you want to think of there. So um, anything you want to print has to be touching that, otherwise it'll print out in space and uh, will not print correctly unless you're in zero gravity, and which even then might be questionable. So um, first of all, navigation. I'll just throw a box out there, um, a couple things out there, so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, so navigation, your left mouse button will select objects, so if you click on them it'll select them which is really nice, and um, the scroll wheel scrolls in and out, zooms, then your right mouse button will um, pan the camera around, so it basically rotates the, the scene. So you can come over here, zoom in, do what you need to do, anything like that. So that's kind of how you get around. Then if I click on an object, you might notice that there are a couple of things that pop up over it. Um, these are little manipulators, so if I hover over them, it'll give me the length of the object on that corresponding axis. So if I take this, grab it, right now it's at 20 millimeters, and I can drag it up to make it 35, drag it down, um, anything like that. And this one drags that way. You can grab the corner pieces to do them both at the same time. And then this one up here affects height. And then we've got an arrow right here that you can actually move it off the ground, but we don't want to do that right now. And then there are rotation tools. So, and actually something that's very cool about this rotation, about these rotation tools, is that if you click them, and drag your mouse outside of the wheel, it'll allow you to move one degree at a time. But there are a few common degrees, like 90 degrees is something you'll use a lot. So if you move your mouse inside, you can it'll actually snap to every 22.5 degrees. So you can hit 45, 90, um, 180, anything like that really, really easily and that's really nice. So just get in here and experiment around. Um, you'll get the hang of it pretty quickly. It's, it's pretty simple to use and very user friendly. Okay, so um, how you get shapes in here. If you look over on the, left, on the right side, there is this list. And if you don't have that, there should be a little button here you can click, comes up. And the ones I use the most are geometric. And those are just your standard 3D shapes. Um, there are quite a few different options. The, some other ones to take note of are numbers and letters, if you want to put text on things. So that's really nice. But for the most part, you'll be spending your time in the geometric shapes. 
So then if you want them, you can just click it, drag them out, and they come onto the plane here. So this is great, but what if we want to make something a little more advanced than these 3D ge geometrical shapes? Well, there are two ways that we can manipulate these things. We can combine them, and we can subtract them. First, let's combine something. So let's say I'll take this down to two millimeters, and I'll move it over into this pyramid. I'll just drag it to fit inside of it a little bit better. So now these objects are overlapping, but Tinkercad still sees them as two separate objects. So if you want to combine those, all you have to do is you can drag select and select both of them, or you can click one and then shift click another. And then come up here and click group. And now these two objects have become one single object. So if I click on it anywhere, it becomes that object. And now every time I move or rotate it, it'll do that to both items. So that's how we add things. If we want to, say I wanted a hole right here, I'll drag this down. We'll just go 10 by 10. And we'll just set that there. So I can come up here to next to color and select hole. And you can see that it becomes semi-transparent here. So if I select those again and select group, it'll subtract out that object and create a hole right there. So through a combination of adding and subtracting different, um, different shapes, you can create some pretty complex objects. So let's make a sample object here really quick. Um, say that we wanted to make like a little nameplate or plaque or something like that. What we can do is, so I'll take this and just go down to two millimeters because that's a pretty decent thickness. And then I'll drag it up in size a little bit. And there we have the basis for our plaque. So just to keep it simple, let's put some letters on there. I'll just say hi. So I'll scale this up a little bit. If you hold shift on this, it'll scale them all proportionately. Super handy tool. And then I'll do the same for this one. I don't know if they have an exclamation point or not. Symbols. Maybe that's, yep, exclamation mark. All right, and that is upside down, so we will just rotate it 180 degrees. Scale it up. That looks pretty good. Not perfect, but it'll do. Um, if we want to even out the heights here, We'll just make them all eight. Because these are weird shapes, they're not always standard size, standard heights and stuff like that. So you will get some weirdness. So we'll just do that. And that looks about like the size that I'd like it to have. So now I'll just take all of these and group it. So now you can see that as one solid object and if it's oriented like this, it'll print really well. And that's something to keep in mind when making these things, because say that I want to print it like, or have it oriented like this, as you can see, there are overhangs there and it will not print. If you've worked with 3D printers before, you know that's a pretty um, basic step in learning how to use 3D printers. So um, you'll probably be familiar with that. So just when you're designing things, keep that in mind because it will be an issue. And the more complex an object is, the, the harder it is to get things to not overhang like that. So we'll just do this, and it should print fine. And make sure it's on the, the print bed, like usual. Um, and then let's just say that we wanted um, some holes out here. So say we were going to like screw it to something. 
Um, and we have some four millimeter screws. We can come around the edge here, create a hole, and line it up with the edge. And then if we hit Control D, it'll duplicate that object, and we can use the arrow keys for a little more precise control. So that should be good there. And then I'll shift select that and then control D those and then put some holes on this side. So that's a super easy way to do that type of thing. And then I can select all of them, select that and then group. And once that finishes processing, you'll see that there are holes that we could use to screw this to something. So that's super handy. Um, and something else to take note of, down here in the corner, there is this snap grid thing. So right now, if you look on this grid, if I move, it'll move one grid space at a time. Um, so say that we needed finer control than that, then we can click down here, and you can see you can adjust that. So we could go five at a time, and that way it'll only move five, five spaces. We go 0.5 to get even finer control. So if we come down here, you'll see it moves half of a space. And it goes all the way down to 0.1 millimeter, which I think is 10 microns. I could be wrong on that. But that'll give you pretty much everything you need. Okay, so say that you're finished with this. Um, what you can do, well, first of all, if you want to rename it, because it'll give it some crazy name, name up here. Um, if you go to design and then properties, you can rename it to whatever you want. And then say you wanted to download it for 3D printing. Um, if I select this object here, I can come up to design and then download for 3D printing. And there's a couple options here. Um, a pretty standard format for most 3D printing software is an STL file. Um, but you can select wherever you want. Now if I just click STL, it will grab both of these objects. It'll just take everything that's in your current project here. So, but say that I didn't care about this little pyramid thing, I just wanted the high. I could make sure it's selected and that one's not selected. Come up to design, go to download for 3D printing and select this box right here. And that is just to take the selected shapes. So you can select as many as you want then click STL and it will just download. Tinkercad's being kind of slow today. So you can see it downloads there and then from there you can import it into your favorite 3D printing software and and once again if you've used 3D printers before you know where to go from there. So obviously there's a lot more you can do with this and it can get more complicated really fast but that's kind of a basic overview um, on how to use this. So the best way to learn is just to get in here and mess around. And it's free, so why not? Okay, guys, well, I will leave it at that. Um, let me know what you thought down in the comments. I can do more of these because there are quite a few more topics I could tackle um, on how to do more specific kind of things in here. Um, so let me know what you thought. That's it for me, guys. Thanks. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you like, subscribe, and share this video. It helps me out a lot. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at Chaos Core Tech. And once you've done all that, check out some of these other videos I've made. Thanks for watching, guys.